Welcome to the Armor Report, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining me on the Week in Review. We do this every Saturday, 1130, and I appreciate your time with me. I'm Brett Rosenthal. This is the Armor Report. Armor stands for Algorithmic Risk Management Research. So what we do here is we manage our equity portfolios with the idea of protecting capital first, capturing upside second. No time like the present to learn that process. So what I'm going to do is walk you through my experience, right? This is the Armor Investing way. The object here is for me to share information with you using algorithms and, and quite frankly, 30 plus years of doing this. And also at the same time, teach you how to use the information to make money and protect capital. So let's do this cause and effect. Here's the information. Here's how we use it as we go through the process today. I'm going to walk you through how to day trade the indexes in a bear market. It's a different type of process than day trading indexes in a bull market. So when you have a, a bear market, what we call risk monitor green and uh, red and um, a negative gamma environment, there's going to be different trades on the day. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how we made money last week, long and short the indexes. These trades show up over and over and over again. In fact, at the Armor Report, and of course, you can subscribe to the Armor Report right down here. You can join us, this YouTube channel. You can subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel. So if you wish, don't forget to do that. But if you drill down into the Armor Report, what we're doing here is we're building for you a playbook of how to day trade the indexes. So when you become a subscriber, you log into the Armor Insiders, you roll down here, click on Day Trading Playbook. And what you're going to see our diagrams step-by-step step, in this particular one, how do we trade long on a Fed day? Step-by-step step, how we do it, okay? And there's trade after trade. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that there's just so many ways the market can trade or behave each day. So what you look for is the type of market you're in. For us, it's a risk monitor color, red, yellow, or green. I'll explain that in a minute the type of gamma location we're in, positive or negative gamma, and the type of open we have, flat, gap up, gap down. Once we know those pieces, there's just so many ways it can play out. And so what we do is look for that trade every morning, put that trade on, book our profits. And sometimes in a bear market like we're in now, we can also find shorts. So we start usually on the long side, then we look for the shorts, depending on how the market plays out. So I'm going to walk you through step by step. Then what we're going to do is, um, as always, I'm going to, you know, kind of take you through the progressions of how we manage armor portfolios as a guide for you. Now, I'm not telling you how to invest. I don't know you. You have to figure out your own risk tolerance goals and all those types of things. But what I can do is share with you the information of the risk monitor. Why don't we start there first? And we'll get to the day trading aspect in a minute because we'll be using these same day trading tools next week to make money again. Week after week, we've been doing this. And I've been sharing a lot of these videos with you, the YouTube channel. We have an education a playlist. You can see some of these videos on how we do it. So I'll get to that in a minute. But in order to understand how we're going to be trading next week, it's important to look at the big picture of the market and how we're managing our portfolios. So let me just take you through this progression, share the information, and then suggest how to use that information for next week's trading. It starts with a discussion of the risk monitor. So when looking at um, the armor report, and we can just go take a look at this again, just so you're aware of how we run this. At the armor report, you click on armor insiders, you're going to see these four tiles up top. We change them every day that they're necessarily needed to be changed. So we have our portfolios. You can see, click on it, what we're doing exclusive videos, armor risk monitor, and the whiteboard. So when you click on the risk monitor, what you end up seeing is the color red, green, or yellow. The risk monitor is really the way I try to share with you the information of our algorithmic approach. So we've written algorithms on the top seven indexes, the S&P, the Dow, small cap, NASDAQ, top four, 
momentum, value, and the IBD 50. So we have innovators, momentum, and value. All of that really covers the entire market direction. The secret sauce, if you will, what gets us to get long the market aggressively or go to cash aggressively is a confluence across all seven. So it's not just one index that might look good. One index doesn't look good. It's a question of when they all move in unison. That's a footprint of institutional capital, either accumulating the market or distributing the market. And it's our job to get in front of those elephants as they're stampeding. It's that simple. That's how we use the risk monitor and it drives all of our risk decisions. So when I say to you, and I came, I actually, we did, we spoke about this um, the week of December 3rd. And we said risk monitors turned red on December 3rd. Now, how do we use that information? We have four portfolios that we manage. One, we simply manage to express the risk monitor. All we do is own the indexes. Risk monitor green, we own 100% of the capital gets put to work. Risk monitor yellow, we book some profits. Risk monitor red, we're 100% cash. So as of December 3rd, we were 100% cash. Then we have other portfolios with varying degrees of cash. And I'm going to go over with you in a minute what our portfolio looks like today and what we might do next week to change the structure. But let's just go through a quick progression of the charts. And those of you who have been following me for the last X amount of weeks, you've seen these charts on a daily level. We've talked about the indexes and I've tried to express to you, this is the information. At the very least, when the risk monitor is red, it tells you there's no confluence, there's confusion in the market. And so we either have the beginnings of a bear market or we have a rotation going on. So either we're building a top or we're just rotating from one small, uh, strong sector into another. It takes some time. That's called consolidation. And then the market breaks out to new highs as new leadership takes over. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been sharing with you that I've been leaning aggressively towards a bear market. And the primary reason is I've been doing this over 30 years. I've never seen absolute destruction in growth stocks that we're seeing over the last couple of months, really going all the way back to last February, to be quite frank. And it's just been you know ballooning over the last couple of months. I've never seen that not lead to an aggressive takedown of the market. Call it a bear market, call it a correction. I don't care what you call it. By the time traditional financial media calls it a bear market, it'll be over. So it's not going to help you at all. All those talking heads on CNBC debating whether or not it's a bear market is a total waste of time. We have to protect capital well before the market is doing what it's doing now. And for those of you following the Armour Report, I hope you've been doing that. I've been trying to express it and I hope the information has helped you protect capital. And what will happen over the next series of weekend reviews with you is that there'll be a time where the risk monitor turns green. And that'll be the time to begin accumulating stocks again and getting aggressive. Armour Insiders, subscribers will know that the minute it happens, as we share the information in the Slack room, we have an armor day trading, or not day trading, armor Slack room. We spend all day sharing information across, you know, all the armor insiders. So you'll hear it there first. If you're a subscriber to this YouTube channel, which you may want to do right now, so you get alerted, you'll know. You'll get a email from us Saturday week in review. Risk monitor green. Let's talk about it. But until then, we're in a risk off protect capital mode. Let's go through some charts so you understand now. The key here before I roll through these charts, we're going to look at the top indexes that drive the risk management decisions with the risk monitor. What we're looking at now are the weekly charts. So you may recall me saying in, in, in uh, live streams past, the weekly close is so much more important than the daily. There can be a lot of daily fluctuations, but 
if the weekly close is strong, you know, that's where the real institutional capital is committed on a more of a weekly level, not on a daily level. Think about it. Individuals, you and I, we trade X amount of capital and institutions trading hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. So they're executing a strategy over weeks, not days. That's why the weekly charts are so important. So let's look at the weekly charts now. We're going to start with uh, the small cap index. Okay, these are weekly bars. We see the false breakout, which was the bear trap right here, and the dramatic collapse three weeks in a row, bang, 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 setting up what is now an unreal breakdown of a 12-month top. An unreal breakdown of a 12-month top. If we go right here, this week right here is the week that the risk monitor went red. I'm going to highlight that for you so you can see what I'm talking about. That was the week the risk monitor turned red. And we'll give it a color so we can... Um, see the see the uh, change okay the risk monitors read that week okay and as you can see the follow through now is just imploding i spent some time with you last week talking about this chart okay this is the weekly chart of the dow and what i shared with you and if you all are following me on twitter i it's at Brett Rosenthal on stock twits. It's Armor Report on stock twits. So I've been sharing this chart pattern. This is a classic rising wedge. Do you, do you guys remember this from last week and the week before? So the debate was we're having a rotation into industrials and cyclicals. Or is it a bear market? And my response over the last couple of weeks was this is a classic rising wedge. They generally break down. And when they break down, it gets really ugly. I've been doing this over 30 years. I've never seen destruction in growth stocks lead to a beautiful breakout in cyclicals and industrials. I've never seen it. And this will be another time where that doesn't happen. Okay? So the rising wedge is breaking down. We talked about this the last couple of weeks. This was a definitive collapse of a rising wedge. And of course, if you want to see how ugly they get, just go look at the IBD 50. This was a classic weekly. We're looking at weekly charts now, ladies and gentlemen. These are not just daily swings. Classic rising wedge failure, the IBD 50. These are innovative stocks. When the breakdown occurs, that's what the Dow is right here. It just gets ugly. Doesn't mean you can't have a couple blue weeks. Those are up weeks, right? The breakdown is ugly. We're going to talk about what's going to happen next week, what we're looking for, but you need to see these charts to understand what's really going on in the market on a weekly level. Rising wedge and the momentum stocks. So you could say to me, well, the IBD 50 are smaller cap, mid cap, aggressive growth names. The momentum stocks are big cap momentum companies. They're imploding. This is what happens when you have a rising wedge that breaks down. Okay. Now they're finally getting to the uptrend in the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P. So the uptrend is dead. So let's talk about now what could possibly happen next week and go over our portfolios real quick. And then we're going to get to day trading the indexes, but I thought it'd be best to start with the big picture and then we'll get down to how to put cash to work during the week to make money day after day after day, what we're doing on the Armour Trading Desk. And I share my live screen with Armour subscribers while it's happening, right? And then I talk you through it. I say, here are the steps. We're looking for X, Y, Z. When it happens, we put money to work. Here's where our stop is. Here's where we book profits. And as I'm literally executing my own capital, I'm sharing with Armor Insiders how I'm doing it and what's happening next and what the stops are, where we're going to raise the stops step by step. And we're making money literally almost every day. Now, there are days where you don't trade because you don't get your setup. That's a whole other story. But every day there's the setup that we look for 
from the Armor Day Trading playbook. We put the trade on and we capture upside. And I'm going to show you a couple of day trades on the long side last week. The only hour you could possibly make money in the market. And we were making that money. I'm going to show you two examples in a minute. But before we get there, let's just briefly talk about, and this is a kind of a brief section because we don't have a lot of stocks in the portfolio anymore. We're carrying 85% cash. We have four different portfolios. Armor index only has been 100% cash since December 3rd. And I think we all see now why that is. And we can see the alpha being created because all of the indexes have cratered below the December 3rd price. So there was no, no, no opportunity to really make any money on a swing trade on those seven indexes. Some were collapsing, some went up a little bit. Now they've all collapsed. So you can see why the index only portfolio stays in cash. Now we've got alpha. This is the fun part for the armor report. As the market implodes and we have all that cash, they're gonna, there's gonna be a risk monitor green moment where we put all of that cash to work in the indexes and we capture upside creating alpha that can never be taken away from us. So patience is key. Putting capital to work after the fall is key. You capture the alpha, you outperform. It's not really hard to understand. It's just a question of patience and understanding the directional movement of institutions. And what we use and the information I share with you is the institutional flow using the armor algorithms for the indexes and the risk monitor. The second two portfolios are more traditional. One is a swing portfolio um, and, and one is a traditional, you know, kind of buy our favorite stocks off the whiteboard, our research names every time we get a risk monitor green. So both portfolios now look exactly the same, which is rare. And all they own are physical gold and silver. So we've got 15% of the portfolio in Sprott Physical Gold and Sprott Physical Silver, and we've got the rest in cash. All right, so let's just talk real quick about gold and silver. Here's Sprott Physical Gold. So you look at the destruction going on in the equity markets and then look at this beautiful chart pattern developing in gold. Now, is it possible gold breaks down? Sure. Sure. Okay. Gold breaks down below the low of two weeks ago, and we'll take this position out of the portfolio. Small risk. Not a lot of risk there. Small losses if that happens. But if this downtrend breaks out, the upside is enormous in precious metals. Let's look at silver. Silver is at the bottom of a huge rectangle. We picked it off at the armor report right down in here near the lows. It skyrocketed last week, had a huge week, hasn't even gotten above the 50-day moving average yet, hasn't even broken the downtrend yet. It's just starting. As I said on Twitter and in stock Twitch, I threw my hat in the ring. The super cycle in commodities is 2022 and the significant move higher in gold and silver started last week. Now, you can all start laughing at me if you want, because I know predicting precious metals moves makes fools out of most of us most of the time. And I don't come on here and make those predictions, right? I don't like to predict. I just say to you, hey, we read and react to what we see. But those chart pattern setups are ideal for higher prices. I understand the whole manipulation groan. I hear you groan. I can hear all of you groaning right now. Oh, but it's manipulated. Gold will never go up again. Blah, blah, blah. I've made a lot of money in gold and silver and in gold and silver stocks since 2005. You have to trade them. It's a swing trading strategy. Okay. I don't, I don't buy into gold's going to go to 10,000. I mean, it may, maybe I'll get lucky and it just goes straight up and never hits my trail stop. Okay. It's possible. There's such a powder keg of reasons why gold and silver should skyrocket this year, that it may happen. 
but I'm not going to get over my skis there. I'm going to have the right allocation to precious metals at these entry points on the weekly charts. And then I'm going to step away and see what the portfolio is capable of doing. I think I've earned the right to say this. You tell me if you think I'm out of line here, but I think I've earned the right to say this. When Bitcoin was trading over $65,000 a Bitcoin and people like Tom Lee were telling everybody on CNBC, it's going to close at a hundred thousand by the end of the year and respected. I put that in quotes, cryptocurrency gurus put out reports that Bitcoin is going to be $10 million a Bitcoin by 2025. We knew the top was in. I came on this live stream and I said to you, please protect your crypto capital. The only reason why you would have analysts coming out with outrageous price targets is because they're talking their book. Come on. Come on, guys. You got to learn this. Analysts come on CNBC. People write reports about $10 million prices on Bitcoin because they already own too much Bitcoin. And the price is going down. And they're talking their book. And they're trying to get you to be the sucker to drive their assets up. That's Ponzi Scheme 101. Even if I believe that gold is going to $10,000 an ounce by the end of 2022, I would never say that to you. First of all, I haven't the slightest idea if that's going to happen. Second of all, why am I trying to shoehorn you into gold and silver? I don't care what you do. I'm sharing with you my experience and I'm putting my own capital where my mouth is and that's it. I have a stop. If it hits the stop, I'm out. If it takes off, I make money. But I'm not going to come out here and write reports that justify ridiculous price targets on a risk asset. Okay? I've been saying for months that Bitcoin and Ether and all of the other cryptocurrencies are risk assets extraordinaire. They are just like innovative growth stocks. And that's not throwing shade on them. I'm saying, look, just understand what the asset is. It's not a replacement for gold. It's not a replacement for your cash. It's not a replacement for currencies. Can you imagine if the dollars you were holding in the bank account dropped 50% in a couple of weeks? It's not a currency. It's a risk asset. Please indulge me for a minute. Anybody following the Armour Report has heard me say this over the last X amount of months, trying to help you protect your capital. I'm not saying there's not a place in the portfolio for cryptocurrencies. I mean, there's no place in the portfolio when Bitcoin's 65,000 plus. But now that it's 35,000 and headed lower, sure, there'll be a place for it. I'll find a place for it at some point when we have reasons to put money to work. But guess what? They trade like innovative growth stocks because it's an innovation. Innovative growth stocks have been destroyed. Crypto is destroyed with it. When innovative growth stocks bottom, crypto will be bottoming. That will be a time to put capital to work. And the person that really succeeds is the guy who understands not to be a diamond hand person. People who are telling you that are literally asking you to be a sucker for them to try to hold up their positions. Stop losses are required to protect capital. The Armour Report, Algorithmic Risk Management Research. You've got to protect yourself. I mean, look, I work too hard for my money to see it evaporate in a month. And listen to other people tell me, just hold on, it'll be okay. 
you know, if I'm a billionaire and I got, you know, a hundred million in it, who cares? All right, all right, that goes down a little bit. So what? I'm a billionaire. I'm not a billionaire. And I've worked real hard for my money. And so I'm always going to use stop losses to protect. So getting back to precious metals, 15% of the portfolio there still have stops. I could be wrong, but this is the right risk reward entry point. Now, I did have, um, you know, GDX in the portfolio. I, mean, I'm, I want to show you the weekly charts of GDX. Okay. So GDX is still holding on. I took it out because the market's imploding. And at the end of the day, gold stocks, silver stocks, these are just stocks. And so if the market really implodes, and that was a kind of a lousy weekly close there on, on the small cap silver stocks. I just decided I'd sleep better if I took those out of the portfolio this weekend. I might put them back in next weekend, depending on what happens here. But what I did last week is actually increase my exposure to this physical metal and reduce my exposure to the stocks. Because when small cap stocks, and you know, don't forget, this is the chart pattern of the small caps, right? So this is, we're all, these are all weekly charts. So when small cap stocks are doing that, okay, it's very hard to get a small cap stock, I don't care what they do, to go through the roof. Now, obviously, if silver and gold blow out, then the small cap silver stocks will go up and gold stocks will go up. But um, to me, this is a time to be very defensive. I'll hold more bullion. I'm happy to do that to reduce my beta. And if we get a big blowout in bullion, let's pretend over the weekend gold jumped $100 and you know these things broke out. I've got enough exposure to the metal and then I can start adding back the individual stocks. So that's where I am on the metal. So those are my thoughts on the big picture of the market. Now, let me show you, we're carrying 85% cash in the portfolio. How do we use it? We're putting day trades on the indexes to capture alpha in a bear market. We do this in a bull market too, but it's a different type of behavior when it's, when it's risk monitor green and you've got a um, positive gamma environment, it's totally different than the environment we're in now. So I'm going to walk you through how we traded last week and feel free to, you know, if you'd like, subscribe to the Armour Report and you'll be able to do this with us step by step as we go um, on our live trading desk. Okay. So what we're looking at here, we're going to just look at um, this is our basic index day trading screen. For those of you who don't know this, I'm just going to try to rip through it real quick and, and get everybody caught up to date. So the purple dashed lines are the spot gamma location. So shout out to spot gamma. That's the gamma source that we use. And we put this on every morning before trading starts so we can get an idea of where the important locations are for the day. Every other line is a part of the armor algorithm for day trading that we call the price movement profiler the Armour PMP. The primary sources for the lines are the VWAP, the black dots are the volume weighted average price. There's lines above and below the VWAP, which are three standard deviations, one, two, and three above and below. Then we have Fibonacci extensions above and below from the opening range. And then of course, most important, not most important, but as important as these other things, um, the third component of importance, if you will, are the average true range calculations. Now you're going to hear me say Armour ATR, Armour VWAP. The reason is I take, and by the way, this is a TradeStation um, um, program. So anybody can do this. It'll work TradeStation or anything else you do. But what we do is we take off the shelf basic um, uh, ATR calculations. We go in there with easy language and we write code to infuse volatility components, top day and multi-day for all of these tools. That's kind of our secret sauce. We think it makes it more effective. Okay. So I'm just going to walk you through day by day. And so we, what we do is we go short, when we, we go long the S and P, the NASDAQ and the small cap, these are all three minute bar charts. So every blue bar is up, every red bar is down, it's three minutes. Okay. Um, We'll go long all three of these indexes and we'll go short just the Qs and um, small caps. I never short the S&P, okay? This is the volatility index. We use VIX as a guide to help us with our trades and we follow the Dow, but we never trade the Dow. Okay, so what we're going to do right here is we're going to just blow this up. I'm going to walk you through some trades from last week.
Okay. So I thought, oh, I think we talked about this last Saturday. This was the, the run there. So this is Monday's action. Okay. Not much to do on Monday, but let's go through this trade right here. So don't forget the armor playbook. So we have the armor report and we have a playbook of, of what we're looking for at the open. So I'm going to walk you through how it sounds when we trade together on the live trading desk. We come in in the morning and we say market was down yesterday. So number one, risk monitor red, big gap down the prior day. Okay. So each, you know, this is one full day here. So it gapped down, traded lower all day. So what does the playbook say about prior day big gap down with a gap up the, in the morning? So what we're saying is the information on that day is risk monitor red, negative gamma environment, prior day collapse, gap up today. What's the play? Go to the playbook, find it. We've seen this trade over and over and over again. It works like clockwork. We just have to figure out what's the setup put the trade on. So here's the trade. We say, okay, we're not buying the gap up because that's not what you do in this setup. You wait for the crazy Ivan selling, which is a term I came up with to just kind of explain what that initial sell-off is. Okay. I'm not going to go over it again. Crazy Ivan. I'll, maybe you guys can look it up anyway. So we get the sell-off bang, 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 right to the key location. The key location here is the armor average true range, low of the day. We get the buy trigger right here. We get long on that bar. We capture the only long trade of the day. You can see we were out by the yellow bar, long by this bar, out by the yellow bar. You could have shorted that bar. And so this is the next point to explain. In a risk monitor red, negative gamma environment, there are usually two trades a day. That long trade, after a sell-off, you pick off the long trade, which is my favorite trade and the easiest trade to execute if your mind is right. There's no fear in that trade. We have 85% cash coming into the day, let's say. Market's down big in the morning. What risk is there in me putting capital to work when we get the right buy trigger at a key location? If it hits the stop, which would have been a new low on the day, it's tiny loss. And our alpha is enormous already because we had cash coming into the day and the market's down big. So we already have alpha. I can give a little away, take a small loss, no big deal. When we capture it right, boom, an hour later, we've just captured alpha. Market goes from here to here. We book our profit following stops. Now on some days, if this was risk monitor green, positive gamma location, this would have held above the VWAP, which are the black dots, and skyrocketed up towards the purple line, which was the next, you know, uh, um, uh, spot gamma location. But in this environment, it dies quick. So you got to book your profit. You can't be greedy. Then the whole thing implodes and you can capture that second trade later in the day. Okay. F fast forward to the next day. Now on this day, we had a huge short trade. I mean, just made a fortune on this short trade. Okay. So playbook, Risk monitor red, negative gamma environment, market down the uh, previous day, gap up morning, nothing to do. We don't chase the gap. So we don't get that trade. Okay. And this brings me to my next point. You have to trade your trade. You don't have to trade every trade to be a successful day trader. You trade your trade. So at the armor report, I share with you high probability armor index day trades right from our playbook. If we don't get that set up, we don't trade that day. It doesn't mean there aren't other opportunities, right? And in the Armor Slack room, on the Armor Slack trading desk, Armor insiders are sharing other trades. And I, I totally agree with a lot of them. But I'm just sharing with you high probability index trades where rewards worth the risk. If we don't see it, we don't do it. Okay? So, you know... I like to say it's it's like in baseball. You, you're trying to hit your pitch. You don't have to swing at everything, but you do have to swing at your pitch. Okay? And that's what we do on the desk. So there's no trade for us in the morning as the market rips higher. <clears throat> We're waiting. In a risk monitor red, negative gamma environment, the rip in the, in the morning all the way up, by the way, to the ATR high of the day sets up a top that allows us to short 
The first short opportunity was here. The second short opportunity was on that down bar. We got short on that down bar and we literally did not cover the short until the last two minutes of the day was our final cover. We booked some profits on the way down at certain locations and then we just carry the rest of the position and it never gave us an excuse to cover. I'm going to give you a little tip right here. You can write this down. One of our favorite tools for the trailed stop is two bars against. If the asset's going down and it doesn't close above the high of two bars ago, these are three minute charts, so that's six minutes ago. If it doesn't close above the high of six minutes ago, we don't cover. It never closed above the high of six minutes ago, which is amazing. And it imploded and we ended up covering at the end of the day in the last two minutes of the day, capturing a huge upside. So then we come into the next day and we say, where's the trade today? Where's the trade today? We captured the only long trade of the day. So we come in on Friday and we say, huge down day yesterday, gap down this morning. What's the playbook? Go to the playbook, find it. Okay, what we look for is a sell-off to a key location. And once again, it's the average true range. So it's the armor ATR low of the day. That yellow bar was the buy trigger. We get long the market on that buy trigger. Okay. And we ended up exiting the whole position really right in here. As it was happening, this, as this bar was unfolding, we were booking the last of our profits gone from the position, an hour long move. And the market sold off the rest of the day. And we captured a little bit of a short trade later in the day when we made some money short as well. But what I love to do, and I'm just going to wrap up here and get to your questions now, but what I love to do on the trading desk, what really gets me going is the alpha capture trade because it's emotionally so easy to me. If I've got tons of cash and the market's plummeting and I got a risk on entry point, so what if I take a loss? So what? I've already got huge alpha. Market's already down one, one and a half percent. And I'm, I've got massive cash. I put a position on and I take a loss of, I don't know, um, a tenth of a percent maybe for the whole portfolio. So what? But the upside, I can capture a, a half, the net worth of my entire portfolio can jump a half a percent or more depending on your position size and how you exit and all those things, if you execute correctly. So the reward's definitely worth it. I'm going to capture the alpha. And the risk is, is minuscule. In a risk monitor green market, there won't be that short opportunity in the afternoon. In a positive gamma market, there won't be the short opportunity in the afternoon. You'll get that risk on entry point in the morning, and it'll grind higher all day. And those are some of the best days. So to wrap up this thought, I'd love to see you on the live trading desk. Consider subscribing, joining us. We'd love to have you. What you look for in this type of environment is the wicked selling in the morning by the reversal. Usually it only lasts for about an hour. You're going to want to book your profits on the way up and raise your stops so you don't lose money on the trades. Somewhere in here, the markets are going to skyrocket for a couple of days. So we're going to try to stay long on these trades as long as we can. But when we get our exits, one of them is the two bar reversal, but there's others I share in the trading desk. When we get our exits, we leave. And we capture our alpha for the day. So what do I think is going to happen next week? Um, I know people are going to ask me that question. So first of all, when it comes to day trading, I don't, I don't, I don't like to come in with an expectation. I want to read and react. So I think it's detrimental. Even if I tell you what I think is going to happen Monday morning and I get it right, it, it's a disservice to you. First of all, you know, heroes have clay feet. So it, it, there could be a service out there that you're reading or you're thinking of paying for and looking at that's predicting market moves. And they send you an email in the morning. They say, hey, get this email in the morning. We're going to tell you what the market's going to do. And they might be right for a period of time. And it's, it's so destructive to capital over a long period of time because they will, without a doubt, hit a patch where they're wrong. And if you've bought into that 
theory without the right risk management disciplines, you're going to get blown out. So whatever money you might make, you'll just give it all away. So on the armor report, what we try to do is say, we come in, we see what we've got and we just react to it. What's the market doing at the open? Go to the playbook. What's the setup? If we get it, we trade it. All right. So take with a grain of salt what I'm about to say. Um, the market had a destructive week last week. I thoroughly expect the market to have a couple of huge up days next week. If the market gaps down Monday morning, I'm going to be looking to get long in a major way off of a day trade. Okay. A gap down Monday morning would, to me, set up a reversal Monday, rally Tuesday, finish that rally off Wednesday, make everybody think the bear market's over Thursday, market's down big Thursday afternoon, getting crushed on Friday, and the weekly bar won't be pretty. So what I'm suggesting to you is after the unbelievable selling last week, probably early next week, there's going to be a bounce that will lead to further selling by the end of the week because institutions on a weekly level are executing orders. So they don't, you know, they're, you know, when they see that collapse like they had last week, they'll, they'll take a step back, let the panic subside, market will bounce, then they'll start distributing capital again. So the big picture is we're in a bear market and it's going lower. The short term picture is I'm looking for rallies. So I can't wait to put these day trades on in the morning because one of them, I mean, one of them, we're going to capture a huge move. When I put capital to work, I use the triples on the indexes, the ETFs, the T, triple Q, or the SPXL, or the, the um, TNA on the, on, the, on the small cap index. When I put a trade on, I'm trying to capture 100% of the market upside from that moment. So let's say the market drops 2% at the open, and I get a risk on entry point. I'm going to put capital to work. Let's say the market closes flat by the end of the day. We're... We're going to have huge gains in the portfolio. We're going to capture the whole recovery. You know, within reason, I'm certainly going to book some profits on the way up and raise my stop. And then I'll capture whatever I can left. Okay. So that's what we'll be looking for. Those are my thoughts for today. I hope you find them helpful. Any questions, I am happy to take them. Start filling up that chat board. Let's, let's get to the Q and A. All right. Um, ID Doc, how are you, my friend? I'm just going to put this up here and we're going to read through. Nice to, uh, nice to see you, Mo. You got the market right in the last three weeks. I'm so happy that, that, that I've helped you out, Mo. I know it, you've worked hard uh, in the Armour um, uh, Slack, on the Armour Slack trading desk. You've worked hard and I'm, I'm glad it's showing some results. Uranium and the miners. Okay, so let me... Um, Let's talk about uranium and, and the miners. So you've already heard me talk about the, the miners. I don't think we've gotten it wrong yet. I only took those positions out to protect capital because I'm uncomfortable about the market collapse. Okay. If the market can stabilize and the precious metal stocks hold above their lows, we're going to want to buy them back. Okay. Because I, I think the metal is going higher itself. So the jury's still out on that situation. When it comes to uranium, I've just never put that in armor portfolios. And I may have tried to trade here and there, but I'm always, I've always kind of missed the, the swing trade and I never put the trade into the portfolio. And I know there's a lot of debate in the armor trading desk of the pros and the cons of, of the uranium trade. Um, I was trying to explain to somebody and there's URA, which is all the uranium stocks. Again, the weekly level. I think it, I'm looking at weekly charts today so you guys can see the magnitude of the decline that are going on. Um, Mo, it just, it just boils down for me. I just can't stand the fact that, what is it, 40% of the world supply of uranium comes out of Kazakhstan. I, I just can't deal with it. I just, I can't sleep at night. Like, like, CCJ. I, I like CCJ as a company. It's the best company in the business. They have huge exposure to Kazakhstan. I, I just can't sleep at night personally. I don't know when the army is going to move in and take over those mines. I don't know, you know, when the mines shut down or when they get nationalized. I, I can't deal with it. The risk is too large for the possible reward. What I can understand you know, is, is probably Sprott Physical Uranium. 
because when 40% of the world's supply is in a country that's in the midst of mayhem, theoretically, the price of uranium should go up a lot. But when it comes to buying the stocks, I just, I can't do it. So then you say to me, well, let's buy uranium companies that, that are US Canadian deposits. That's true. That's true. And that's probably the best way to go. The ones that, you know, top the list for me are maybe, you know, energy fuels and, and NXE, I think. But the patterns are just not set up for me. We don't ever get the risk on entry point from an armor algorithm. And of course, in all fairness to uranium, we're in a bear market. All assets usually go down in a bear market. There could be some exceptions, maybe gold and silver or a safe haven, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but typically when the market implodes and you get to this, this um, risk off panic and um, uh, margin call type of market, it doesn't matter that, you know, potential upside of uranium. It's the type of people who own uranium in their portfolio can't take it anymore. And they're just dumping everything. The old baby in the bathwater approach. So uranium, big picture supply demand makes a lot of sense. Stocks getting whacked. That creates opportunity for us going forward is my thought. Um, something else I wanted to share with you just flew out of my mind. I was thinking something else. Ah, I can't remember it right now. Maybe it'll come to me. Not exactly beach weather in Florida today. That's true, man. But you know what's so funny? Um, I'm, I look at the beach. I look out my window this morning. I look at the beach. See, I see people going to the beach, you know? And when you look at the license plates, the cars that are pulling up, you know, it's New York, it's Massachusetts, you know, Ontario. So I guess it depends on where you come from. Um, well, I consider CEF. Absolutely. C CEF, um, there's the CEF chart. So for those of you who don't know, Sprott Physical Gold, Silver, and then Sprott Physical Gold and Silver. So you could buy PHYS, PSLV, or CEF. CEF always seems to carry a higher discount. I don't know why that is. I just feel like, and so on one argument is, well, go buy it because at some point the discount closes. And the other argument is the discount never closes because people who want to own gold buy PHYS, people want to own silver buy PSLV. So I don't know. It's six of one and half a dozen of another to me. Um, you could own, you can own all three. I just own, you know, each separately, you know, because I allocate my gold allocation, my silver allocation, never the twain shall meet. But th there's nothing wrong with CEF. What subscription would be best? I don't have a PC and I trade on iPhone and iPad. I'm looking for setups, entry and exit alerts, stop loss suggestions. Thanks. Well, the Armor Pro live trading desk is for somebody who can literally watch us trade because what we do is we create a live stream like this on YouTube exclusively for subscribers, right? So Armor Pro subscribers, we have this YouTube live stream going on and I share my screen and I'm talking you through the trades. So, I mean, if you could do that through your iPhone and your iPad, which you should be able to, and you want to trade with us in the morning, then that's the subscription for you. If you're telling me you're not a day trader and you're an investor, so you want to know what the portfolios look like. When do we have risk on changes? When we get a risk monitor green, what stocks are we buying? And you want to have access to that information but don't need the day trading component, well, that's Armor Extra Crispy. That's the right in the middle there. You're going to get access to our Slack room. So you're going to be on the Armor Slack trading desk all day, reading what we're doing, not watching the live stream, but reading what we're doing, seeing what we're adding. In the Slack room, we have an Armor uh, portfolio update channel where I'm the only one that posts in that channel. And when I'm making a change of the portfolio, I tell you what I'm buying, what the price is, what the stop is upload our um, our spreadsheet at the end of each day. So that might be, um, that's the big difference, right? Armor Pro lets you be part of the live stream and watch the screen share as we're trading, talking through trades. And Armor Ash Crispy gives you access to the live, um, excuse me, the, the Slack trading desk so you can communicate with us, see what we're doing, but not necessarily day trade it. 
Thanks for that softball question. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for asking me that. Good morning, Deb. How are you? What are your thoughts on uh, behind? Uh, yeah. So we haven't talked about our dividend portfolio, but now's a good time to go over it. Um, I made some changes to the dividend portfolio. You're asking about AT&T. Um, so let's let's switch this over to a, a day um, the day chart instead of the weekly. So the real place the real p- place for me to buy AT and T was here, and I stared at it and I didn't execute it. And I'm um, I'm asking myself how can I not execute that? Um, th- I think the dividend is real. The whole market thought the dividend was not real uh, all year last year and and killed the stock. I think the dividend is probably going to be real. And I do want to work AT&T into the portfolio, but I don't want to pay up for it. So when it has a pullback to a key support level, some week, maybe it comes back down to the 50 day moving average, then I'd look to own it. I think also Verizon probably could be owned in here. You know, the big picture story, if we want to talk about the fundamentals of these companies, they're spending a lot of money right now on CapEx to roll out 5G. Once that's complete, the, the revenue streams should just balloon for these companies, right? So the dividends should be should be intact and should go up. And so um, I've, you know, I can see adding, look, see, like, look at Verizon. It's come back down towards the 50. I can see adding Verizon right in here. I think a four and a half percent yield. I've got this stock in the, in the portfolio. We bought it right here. It blew out at 7.7% yield. It blew out, then it sold off. It's going to be a lot more volatile because the people who own Lumen Tech, look look back here on this big spike up. These were meme type of type of you know Wall Street bets people. So it's kind of skews the way the stock trades. But I think that dev- this dividend is real at seven point whatever percent. My stop would be somewhere down in here on a weekly basis. So if I have to, I'll sell it and then I'll look to buy it back down here. Um, but I just can't believe it's going to go to a nine or ten percent yield. That would be unreal. So yes, I'm looking for AT&T, but I need it on a pullback. Now, what I I actually sold a couple of um, stocks out of the dividend portfolio last week. We bought Rio Tinto down here and it blew out and I decided to book the profit on the reversal. Did the same thing on BHP. I don't normally trade my dividend portfolio like this. I bought it here. It popped. It got back below the 200 day. I exited. Okay. Um, I did the same thing on IBM. We owned IBM right in right in here. It went down a little bit, waited for it, it popped. When it reversed, went back below the 200 day, I sold it. So I don't normally do that, Deb, but I I had I had too much exposure in the dividend portfolio at a time when the market's imploding. And so I had to be honest with myself. BHP and Rio are industrial metal stocks. They're not really dividend stocks. They are, they pay a dividend. And it's a function of how much they sell throughout the year at what prices. Okay. But they move more with, you know, what's going on in the industrial sector. And when I look at this going on in steel, we made money on this. We bought uh, our Cleveland Cliffs here and we sold it up here before the utter destruction in Cliffs. Uh, I can't see this type of implosion in steel and hold on to industrial metal stocks. So it was in my dividend portfolio, but I decided to book those profits and raise cash. So we were 70% invested, 30% cash in dividend. Now we're 50%, 50%. And the 50 we've got invested are in the pi- energy pipelines, um, a couple of uh, pharmaceuticals at ridiculously cheap prices, Pfizer, excuse me, and, um, and uh, um, Abvi. So we've got them at real cheap prices and I'm going to try to ride this out and keep collecting the yield. Um, but I wanted to raise some cash there. So that's what I was doing. Um, I also am not fluent in options. Just want to trade stocks. Thanks. Yeah, uh, Richard, I don't, uh, I don't trade options. I let, if you guys want to trade options, that's great. I try to share information that can protect capital and make money. I show you how I use it. So if I'm getting long the S&P and the NASDAQ indexes, I'm buying the triple ETFs for my trade for an hour or two, okay? I'm not afraid of those 
triples. I think they're great. Uh, they're great tools for me. Uh, and there's no real decay that bothers me. But other people I know love trading options. They like trading index uh, futures. Hey, man, it, I'm sharing the information. You do whatever you want with it. And if you don't like options, that's fine. We don't really talk too much about options uh, on the desk unless somebody asks me about them. I'm happy to go over them. And one of the things I love about the Armour Report, if I may continue to um, share uh, um, some thoughts with you about the report, we've got a lot of smart people who are Armour insiders and they share their information. We've got one options guru on there and he's more than happy to share with anybody who has a question how to go about an options trade. You know, so... Um, it's a community. I like to say we're an army of analysts at the Armour Report. Me and all the Armour insiders, we're an army of analysts followed up by a tank division of algorithms. And that's how we capture alpha. Um, yeah, Lena, Lena, we did. We did provide. And of course, I just went over Verizon with you. Yeah, I think Verizon probably should be bought. But I'm just not buying anything right now as the market's imploding. So, um, I've got this will be a great time to add to our dividend portfolio. Let the market implode. Let some of these stocks that are really dividend stocks implode because the market's crashing. I mean, dividend stocks, there's nothing going to save dividend stocks if the market keeps crashing. They're all going to go down, which makes the yields pop. And that's when I like to add things. I did that in March of 2020 in my dividend portfolio. And I just had you know massive success. And so I'm looking to do that again. So I've got 50% invested, 50% cash, and I'm kind of holding that 50% to take advantage of massive weakness in, in, in some ideas that could create you know, huge upside over the next 12, 24 months. I don't know what those are. Are those, are those symbols, Hannah? Um, B-A-Y? I don't know what that is. Rent the one runway. I don't know if that's really what you're asking me about. That thing is imploding. Thoughts on copper. I, I'd love to own copper. I didn't want to check. I missed the entry point. Cop so COPX is all the copper miners around the world. The, I just look at, I'm not sure I want to own this because there's a bunch of Chinese uh, companies in this ETF and I don't buy Chinese companies. I don't believe Chinese companies. I don't know who actually owns the assets of Chinese companies. God, everybody who follows the honor report knows that I've, been saying that for a long time. And the stocks have been crushed. And so the Armour Report, algorithmic risk management research. We start by managing risk. I can't own Chinese companies. I can't own Kazakhstan companies. I can't manage that risk. Um, so what stocks would I buy? I want to get back into BHP and Rio. So I just took them out because the market's imploding and they're wrecking industrials. And so I'm hoping they bring down Rio Tinto and BHP and I can put them back in the portfolio. And they have copper mines. In fact, BHP has a, a lot of uh, uranium exposure. Thank you, Erez, for sharing that information with us, who's an Armour Insider and one of our analysts. Um, so thoughts on copper and gold miners from South Africa. Um, I'm assuming the RAND be stronger than the dollar. I won't, I won't do it. I'm not saying you can't make money there, but it goes in the same category for me. And, and I mean, no disrespect to South Africans. So maybe it's just my myopic view. Maybe it's just uh, an American and the way I look at the world. I'm, I'm only comfortable in, in U S and Canadian companies and to a lesser degree, Mexican companies in the precious metals world. I'll, I'll buy some Mexican stocks. I'm not comfortable with Peru or Argentina. You know, some of those South American countries are leaning towards nationalizing reserves. So even if South Africa, let's say, doesn't nationalize, okay, but you get Peru or Argentina deciding to nationalize a gold mine or something, it's going to send a shockwave across all of those types of countries where maybe the rule of law is a little bit different than the, the U.S., Canada, Europe, like Rio Tinto, I mean, they're all over the board, but you see what I'm saying? Like I'll do Europe, US, because I believe in the rule of law and, and some of those countries, and maybe it's just because I don't know South Africa well enough. I, it makes me uncomfortable. I read things, you know, 
about South Africa and some of the mines and some of the things going on there. And I wonder, you know, is that a really a great place for me to have capital? So it's all about risk management for me. And it's about, I can buy Newmont mining. I can buy, you know, um, any of a myriad of U.S. Canadian based mining companies, or I can buy a South African company. I'm just more company, co comfortable in North America. You're saying the RAND's going to outperform the dollar. I'm not convinced of that. You know, the dollar is going up in value right now, I think, isn't it? I know that sounds crazy, but there's the dollar chart. I mean, the dollar is not collapsing. So you're asking me now to make a bet on what I think the dollar is going to do. I'm trying to figure out the direction of the dollar. I, I, I haven't the slightest idea. So I'm going to stay uh, away from that idea. Don't know what that is or who that is. So we'll, we'll end on that, on that note there. Unless you have any other questions, guys, I'm going to sign off right now and say uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'll end on this quick note here. And I've been sharing this chart with you guys um, for a while here. So don't forget that uh, debt leads equity. If you have any other questions, fill up the, the board. I'll answer them if anyone's got another question. Um, but debt leads equity, okay? So you're seeing treasuries break down, which is never a good sign. And more importantly, what we follow um, really are the, um, and I've been sharing this chart with you. This is uh, investment grade debt, okay? So the investment grade debt is breaking down in a major way. And so debt leads equity. Another way to look at it is here. So keep your eye on these charts. If it really gets out of hand, particularly this one, this will show us if we're seeing a dislocation in um, credit spreads. Now, I don't expect this sell-off to be the same as sell-offs in 2008. There's not a financial crisis here. But whenever you see corporate debt collapse, it's just another paw print in the bear market that we're experiencing right now. So please protect capital and be patient. There are going to be a couple huge days up in the market. It won't mean a thing. Go back and look at previous bear markets, previous sell-offs. Some of the biggest rallies occur in down markets. That's a fact. Statistically speaking, some of the largest single-day moves happen in down markets. We're going to try to capture those on the day trading desk, which could lead to a huge day for us. I'm looking for that. I'm, I'm working so hard to capture that. But it won't change the bigger picture. The destruction is so great right now. It's going to take time to build a base to come out of this. The armor report will be there for you. I'll share the information as I see it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to catch the bottom. Our armor algorithms are not about bottom chasing. We don't try to catch a falling knife. We'll let the bottom develop over a series of weeks then we'll get our opportunities and we'll put capital to work. So the last thought this weekend is patience. Take a deep breath, do your research, get your ducks in a row and be patient. Thank you all for joining me. I look forward to seeing everybody next weekend, same time, same station. Armor, subscribers, I'll see you on the live trading desk. 8.30, Monday morning. Okay, everybody, take care. Have a good weekend.